Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston, and today I'm back for another episode of my New York Mets Dynasty series here on Out of the Park Baseball 19. And today we are back with the midseason episode for 2020, and we are in season number three, off to a 36 and 19 start in season number three, coming off of our World Series championship, of course, last season. And in the last episode, we had the World Baseball Classic, which was fun. We lost in the championship game in that tournament but now we are on to the major league season and we're off to a pretty good start for a number of reasons we're second in runs scored first in runs against first in starters era second in bullpen era first in defensive efficiency sixth in on base first in home runs and i mean it's been an all-around bunch of production group of production i guess uh from a pretty talented roster and some new guys like Jack Zollner, I guess he's just he just recently got called up, so I can't credit him quite yet, although he's off to a unique start, hitting 190, but with a 121 WRC+. Plus. But you see Harper and Conforto leading the way. Betts having a little bit of a down year offensively so far, but his BABIP is also pretty low. Anthony Rendon also not off to a good start offensively, but he's still providing decent defensive value at third base. And of course, we moved Gurriel to DH, so and he's having a, a good year at the plate, as you can see. Um, Real Muto has not been that good, so we're probably we're likely to go with Jake Rogers pretty soon. And one thing I noticed that I don't even know how this happened, but Josh Naylor, a, a Rule 5 pick, has just been in AAA this whole time. And I'm not really sure how this has happened or how this was possible, because the Rule 5 guy is supposed to be at the Major League level or on the DL all year. So I don't know how we have pulled this off, but I'm okay with it because I don't really have room for him with Zollner. And, uh... Dominic Smith. Smith, I guess, maybe he becomes a trade candidate if we really want to use Naylor. But, uh, because he has kind of struggled this year. Zolner getting some of the playing time now. And Zolner's probably the long-term option anyway. But either one of them could be DH options too beyond Gurriel, because this could be Gurriel's last year for sure. Uh, Rosario has hit pretty well so far to start this year as well, uh, which has been a decent surprise. Almost traded in the offseason. But he's had a good first 150 plate appearances. And Jimenez has been on the bench for the most part, not hitting quite as well. But we've got plenty of options in AAA. And we've got players to trade potentially, too, if we want to make an addition to the team. But right now, we don't have much to complain about. Look at the starters. Syndergaard has come back nicely off of Tommy John. DeGrom is having another solid year. Mats has been pretty good. He's currently suspended. But, I mean, we can't complain with how he is pitching. Very good ERA. Decent peripherals. And Justin Dunn also having a good year in the rotation, back in the rotation this year after being in the bullpen last year, and he's having a very good year. And the thing about these pitching, these pitchers too, is that they're playing behind, you know, or playing in front of one of the best defenses, maybe the best defense in the league. I already showed that we were one, or we were first in defensive efficiency. Triggs is having a okay year, and the bullpen has been pretty good for the most part. We have Dave Peterson, I still want to get. I almost feel like Peterson maybe. To try him out as a starter over Triggs, quite honestly. Um, but Anderson has been decent, and the rest of the bullpen has been pretty good. Very happy with uh, Britton, and even though Miller's numbers aren't great, look at his strikeout to walk. So he's going to be heard from uh, before it's all said and done, certainly, if and when we get to the playoffs. So not much to complain about, but let's do the first-year player draft. we got to get this out of the way before we can move on. And I don't know when we pick... Because I, uh, do we have first round pick this year? This is the supplemental draft or the supplemental round, so we do not have our own first round pick. But this is a pick we got for, I don't remember who off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've played this, so not everything is coming back to me immediately. So for this pick, I think it's going to be between this guy Alan Mercer and uh, one of these bats here, Chris Arnold, who I quite like. Looks like he's got pretty good power, uh, but he's an unknown demand, and Alan Mercer is a slot. So I think I might take Mercer and hope that uh, that Arnold stays available, and I think I can just get Mercer from the screen. And this was our scouting director recommended. This is another good bat, a second baseman. Looks like he's got pretty good defensive ratings as well, and he's another slot guy. So we could go with him over Mercer. I think we'll do that, actually, because I'd rather have the bat and... Mercer did not fall, but I'm going to see if this other guy did. 
we did Chris Arnold. So I'm gonna grab him. It's our third round pick. An auto draft, and let's see what the scout says. Austin Picasso. There's probably not too much left here. There's this guy who doesn't look too bad potentially. Two million dollar demand, but we have plenty of budget room, so why not? Jimmy Shambly, come on down, meet the demands. Fifth round. Um, this is a decent first base in bats. This is another unknown demand. We'll get him. It can be an insurance policy in case we don't sign. Uh, the other guy we signed, we drafted Arnold, and let's take one quick look at pitchers. See if there's anyone left. Probably mm, Ken Flores. No, he is a slot guy, so I will draft him. And how about this guy, Shane Duran? Or well, let's look at stuff. Juan Flores. Give me. And all right, we'll do the rest on auto draft. And we will take a look at all of these demands, see who we can sign, and see if we're going to come away with anyone. The drafting is still. Uh, I've yet to, even in this franchise, I've yet to really, or this dynasty, I've yet to really draft and develop anyone. As of yet, all the guys I've gotten have been through trade or free agency. So Chris Arnold's coming out demanding a 2.8. I'm going to offer you five, my friends, because I want you that bad. And the rest of these guys I'm going to hold off on. Kellum Clark could be a backup option if we don't sign Arnold. I guess I should have just offered Arnold the whole budget, honestly. And yikes, Chris Arnold does not re-sign. I knew I should have just given him the whole budget that we had. So, all right, we're going to have to go for Kellum Clark. And I'm not making the same mistake twice. Giving him the whole thing. And hopefully that works out. And this is a pretty significant setback. Noah Syndergaard down for three months with bone chips in that elbow. So that is not good. At least, at the very least, only three months. So that sets him to... Sets him up to come back right around mid-September, which is right when he's going to need to come back if he wants to be ready for the postseason. So put him in the 60-day, and hopefully that's going to allow Peterson to step into the rotation because that's what I want to see. I'm going to I'm going to set Anderson as a reliever with the game strategy. And that should put Peterson in the rotation. All right, so that's silver lining, because I do want to see him in the rotation, and if that doesn't work out, we probably don't need to trade for a starter, because we still have Anderson, but I'll certainly keep my eye on the waiver wire, in case anyone becomes available for nothing. This was a pretty sick game as I was going along in the simulation, 25-9 to over Miami, and look at Bryce Harper, 4-4 four for four with three walks, five RBIs, uh, it looks like he had a home run and a double, and a single, probably two singles with those other two hits. But uh, Shuang had eight RBIs. Did he hit a couple home runs? He had. He only had one home run. Zolner homered. Only three homers in this game for us, but a bunch of guys. Zolner with four RBIs. And uh, I think the Harper getting out base seven times, probably the craziest. And the bullpen kind of stinking it up after Mats. Actually, Mats didn't even. Mats was okay. But wow, 25 to 9. We're just a few days ahead of the international free agent signing period beginning which is one I was going to sim up to anyway. But we had, uh, well, we're going to do a couple things here. We had one injury that uh, I guess I set a couple things in motion, and it was to David Peterson. He went down with a strained elbow, elbow strain. So he's out for three weeks, not a, not a huge injury, but uh, we obviously need to replace his spot in the rotation. Called up Drew Smith initially after the injury to Syndergaard. He's looked like garbage. Uh, five run runs in an inning and a third. Very small sample, of course. But anyway, um, looking at our AAA roster, I do want to get Jake Rogers to the major leagues now. He's looked pretty good in AAA. He really doesn't have much left to do in AAA. And we've held him, we might actually have held him down long enough to get that extra year of service because he had 65 days of service entering the year. And we're probably, we must be, we would have to be 78 days in, I think, because it's 13 or something like that, or 11, 11 or 13 days. I guess it's 11, actually, so we'd only have to be 76 days into the season, which I think we are beyond that because it's June 27th, so we probably uh, pulled that off, uh, which I didn't even really mean to do because ploiecki has been, been hitting fine, actually, and, I mean, just the way he's playing, I can't get rid of him. 
But Real Muto is a free agent, and I traded for him. He's been terrible. So I'm just going to get rid of him, honestly. I know his ratings aren't bad. He probably could bounce back. I mean, scouting. Scouts don't really like him anyway. I mean, his ratings aren't bad, though. I do like the avoid K and the contact. Those aren't bad. Good, decent defense. And normally I would keep him around, but he's really the guy to get rid of here if I want to give Rodgers a chance. And Rodgers is so good defensively, I feel like he's kind of a fail-safe anyway, especially now that we have the DH. Our offense is probably going to be fine if we if we bat him in the playoffs. The other option, I, I suppose, would be to try to keep them around as three catchers and be aggressive with pinch hitters. But that would work out better if we had like a timely injury or something because I do need to give Rodgers some at-bats. And I think this, this trade for Wade Davis, and all these offers are pretty much the usual guys on big money contracts. But this Wade Davis one actually makes sense because he – has no guaranteed money beyond this year. It's a team option with a with no money buyout after this year, and he can opt out anyway. So the only thing is, I would like to maybe get uh, get Colorado to retain some of this salary because this could zap up some of our budget room moving forward, and maybe we can throw in someone. All right, so we can get to 30% retain salary on Davis with. Harold Gonzalez, who I'm more than fine with giving up. He looks like nothing more than 4A fodder. And this only drops our available money by one point, but basically 1.9 million because Real Muto still has some of the 8.4 million uh, that is his salary left on that deal to pay out for the rest of the year. So we're going to do this, and I'm going to put Davis in the put Davis on the roster right away. And probably move Anderson into the rotation uh, for now and see how he does as a starter. And then we still have one roster spot that is going to go to Rodgers. And we still have Josh Naylor. <laughs> I don't know what to do with him, but we can start moving ahead now. So we'll see. I guess Pulecki probably is going to be the starter. We'll see what Callaway does. Simulation has been going so slow. And it looks like Rodgers is going to be the starter for now, but it's pretty much every other game Pulecki getting in there as it was with Real Muto. So we will continue to go forward now as we've got Dominic Smith starting at DH over Guriel against righties and lefties. That's surprising. So Guriel on the bench, even though he's still performed pretty well. But either way, we've got lots of options with this team. Good depth all around and plenty of bats to go around, which is good. So I'm just going to skip forward to July 2nd. And we moved up to July 2nd, and we are just dominating play right now, 55 and 25. And we've got a 688 win percentage, 7 and 3 in our last 10 on a four game win streak. And things are just going well for our team right now. And we're going to take a moment to appreciate the season Bryce Harper's having. As we also note that Jack, Zach, Jack Zollner getting hot. This you love to see. Only a 322 bad, but he's got a 173 WRC. Plus. He's looking like a god. And we think he could be a god, so <laughs> that's a great sign. But Bryce Harper, I mean, let's just take a moment to appreciate this season. He's on pace for 9.3 wins, uh, hitting 319 with a almost an 1100 OPS, on pace for 57 homers, and uh, pretty much just having an all-time season right now. So taking a look at the available amateurs, and there are certainly some guys that look pretty, pretty uh, appetizing. Not known to miss a workout is Luis Morales. You love to see that. Uh, Jorge Centeno tries to exceed the number of required expectations. Hmm. It's also spicy. Although I don't love his hitting potential as much as I like Morales' pitching potential. So I think I'm going to... Although I guess Morales is only a two-pitch guy, so I don't even know. Could be, uh, could be a pretty dynamic two-pitch guy, though, it looks like. What about Sue? Wow, maybe none of these guys are really that good. I don't know. I guess Centennial maybe has a little bit of pop, and he certainly can field this position, it looks like. And he's got a good personality. But maybe, I don't know, maybe Morales ends up developing that third pitch. Who knows? I'm not sure who to go with. I think I'm going to go with Morales. It just feels like, at the very least, he could be a, a pretty good major league reliever. And that's worth something. So give me that. And we've got some expiring personnel. So, Mickey Calloway, pretty much got to bring him back, right? I mean, you won a World Series, we're off to a great start the next year. 
Five-year contract? Uh, gee, I don't know about that, but uh, how about a three-year extension for 1.5 per? And then we will look at the pitching coach, Dave Island. I think we got to be pretty happy with this guy, too. Three-year extension for sure. Get him back. And team trainer. I guess the trainer. He's been pretty good, too. Hasn't really uh, kept Syndergaard healthy. But I guess that's Syndergaard's fault. I don't know. Let's just extend him, I suppose. For four years. Why not? We got money to burn. We're the New York Mets. I guess that's actually the opposite in real life. But not in this not in this world. We won the World Series now. Now we got money to burn. And Callaway did agree to that contract. So we're all set with that. And we got Luis Morales as well. So good for us. So we have reached the all-star break. 64 and 31 with a 674 win percentage. And David Peterson back and ready to come off the DL. I suppose we'll have to send down Drew Smith. He has not been... Spectacular, even after those first first few outings, those were pretty bad. How many he's given up? Well, he's been a little bit better, except for that last outing. But still, he's a, he's another option if someone gets hurt. He's probably the first guy that's going to come up. But um, we are going to activate Peterson for sure, and I want to. I still want to give him a shot in the rotation. He could become trade fodder. I don't really know if he holds a ton of value. But um, Anderson, for now, I'm going to move him back to the bullpen. And we're going to take a look at the All-Star Game rosters. See who made it from our Mets team. We have DeGrom right off the bat. Justin Dunn, still having a pretty good year. Syndergaard as well, even though he's hurt. <laughs> Only through 94 innings, still made it. Ta, out of our bullpen, he's having a pretty good year number two. For us, Zach Britton having a phenomenal year. Number one for us. <laughs> um, position player-wise, not nearly as strong. I imagine Harper is going to be our only one, it looks like. Harper and Betts. Betts did make it. He's hitting the ball better as of late. You can see the numbers much more like they were last year. The on-base even higher than it was. Conforto also making it, even though he's been up and down. He actually has been cold a little bit as of late, but still 25 homers. And throw it in 60 plate appearance or at bats, and uh, Harper, of course, making it. He's having what looks like it could be an an MVP year from the from the NL. There's a few uh, guys having similar years in the AL. Lindor is hitting 360. He's almost at six wins already. Cray is having a good year. Um, those are really the only guys having comparable years, I guess, war wise to Harper at least. But anyway, still leading the power rankings, and. We are going to start thinking about uh, trade deadline possibilities, what we might want to do before we get to the deadline. And I think the biggest thing is going to be to potentially get another starting pitcher, really just for insurance. Um, in terms of Syndergaard coming back, I mean, it's eight to nine weeks, which really lines him up for the end of the regular season right at the beginning of October. If he has any kind of setback, then we are looking at potentially having Justin Dunn in game three and Andrew Triggs in game four of a playoff series, and I think uh, we would feel so much better if we just had someone in there to bump Triggs. Um, Triggs is good, but I don't know how much I trust him in a playoff game, a game four situation. Um, I think that's really the one spot you look at on this roster, because look at the lineup, and I mean, I think for the most part, there isn't really much to do with the lineup. I mean, maybe catcher is the one spot, I suppose, that you could really look at that we could use a significant upgrade at, although Pilecki continues to play well. And Rogers, we're really just, we've just started to give him a shot. He has a good personality. He's really good defensively. So I feel like catcher is, you know, fine for the most part. And other than that, I mean, maybe third base, but Rendon has hit the ball better as of late. And we also have options if Rendon goes cold. We can go Gurriel at third base. We can go Andres Jimenez at third base. Um... Rosario looks like he's been demoted to the backup, even though he's continued to, to hit the ball well. I feel like we're fine at shortstop. We have Rosario, Jimenez, and Hampson. In the outfield, of course, we're not really. I mean, the, maybe the one thing is getting a fourth outfielder, since it looks like Rosario has pretty much been left to be the fourth outfielder for now. So those, I think, are going to be the two things that I'm on the lookout for, and we'll just go beyond the trade or the All-Star break. 
and then we'll be exactly one week before the deadline. So looking at the trade block and really looking at the starters, Quintana is hurt, so that's not realistic. Samarja is one option. He is in the last year of his deal, and he's had pretty good numbers, very good command pitcher. Um, and he probably, how many innings has he, th well, this is Quintana. How many innings has he thrown? I see that he's hurt right now. But he's been at 200 innings and 32 plus starts the last two years, which is good because he does tend to get banked up in real life at least. Um, there's also John Lester, whose ratings are not as good. He's got one year left on his deal, although that is a team option, but that certainly won't be picked up, $25 million. Um, I did see Marcus Stroman. This one interests me a little bit. Tywon Walker as well, potentially. Guys with, well, actually both these guys are free agents at the end of the year as well. Um, I think Samarja is probably the best option, though, honestly. So I think that's going to be the one that we try to go for. So as of right now, it looks like we can get Taiwan Walker for pretty much nothing. A couple, a couple names here popped up that I certainly would not mind giving up. But Samarja, the Giants are really looking for more of a win-now player because they're in win-now mode. So it would have to be kind of more of a swap. Uh, I could do uh, a little bit of a package. I got like Zapuki, one of our depth starters, a uh, controllable guy, and Rendon. Or I could do Zapuki and James Pazos. But in terms of just one for one, you can see the kind of offers that they want or that they're looking for. Um, and Stroman, was Stroman still on Toronto? He was. I'm sure he would be in a similar boat where I could get him for mostly nothing. So I don't mind falling back on that. I guess they actually Toronto's looking for a little bit more than Arizona wa uh, wants for Walker. But I'm going to wait and see uh, how this market plays out. Maybe the Giants' demand goes down. I'm certainly not in a rush to make a deal, uh, especially because, well, we're just we're in, a good, we're in a good spot regardless. I feel like this is really just making a deal to make a deal almost to feel like we have to add to this team in some sense, just because it's in such a good position already. If we can just shore up any kind of minor hole, it could make a difference when it comes down to it. And we lose Michael Conforto for three weeks with a strained hip muscle. That's no good. But that's not the end of the world. Um, that would give us a chance to promote, perhaps, Billy Hamilton. Uh, he's not gotten his chance yet. We could go Garrett Hampson. Well, I feel like I should give Hamilton his chance. <laughs> Hampson and uh, Hampson and Hamilton both kind of fill the same role. One of them is going to be on the playoff roster as our pinch runner type. I'm kind of hoping the game puts Rosario in left field, though, not going to lie. Because I would rather see Rosario get Aguriel. Eh. I kind of want to see... I'm, I'm going to force start Guriel, or not Guriel, excuse me, Rosario, in left field for these couple of weeks because I want, to, I want him to develop his outfield ratings a little bit. Make him just a little bit more versatile. I see, I see in his um, in his ratings that his outfield rating should be fine. He should be, no, well, he should be decent in left field. Might even be better in right field just because his arm is so good. But he should be good enough to play left field. And now we are just two days ahead of the, or one day ahead of the deadline actually, July 30th. So we're gonna start to think about making our move. And some are just still there. No longer hurt, of course. He had the day-to-day -day injury. Eovaldi is on the market as well. He's got one year left on his deal. He had a good 2019. Not a strikeout guy, though. Uh, does have one more year on his contract. Good stamina, good innings eater, if nothing else. Uh, but I still think Samarja is definitely the one I want the most. I just don't know if we're going to be able to... Yeah, it looks like that hasn't really... His market has not really evolved... This is this is perhaps the best package we could do, uh, at least from our perspective, is Smith, Zapuki, and Guriel. That's three guys that I don't really think any one of them individually is going to come back to haunt us too too much. Zapuki, I don't know, he's kind of he's kind of an enigma almost with his ratings, but Guriel, Guriel is solid. Guriel still hits the ball very well. He played a good third base for us. That's probably the one that we might regret the most. If we were to do this, but I'm not even sure I still really want to do this. I think Guriel is the one breaking point for me. Um, 
I mean, perhaps I would consider doing it even if I gave up another starter in Conlon, but they still want, like, a major league piece. Even though some of the guys I'm giving them I feel like could fill in. But maybe if we give them one good prospect as well. Or one decent prospect, at least. Not too good. Um... But it doesn't really look like that's going to move the needle. One guy that I that I uh, could maybe do is James Pazos. Because he's a lefty, but we have Miller in Britain. So we don't have a need for that left-handed Pazos as much. He really has been used as a lefty specialist. Maybe him and... I mean, the real... So like the real thing to do would be if we could, if we could do Lindsay and uh, someone else. Like Lindsay and... Not Rosario, but Miranda or someone of that caliber. But I don't know. All right, so I think this is the best package we could do. I've thrown in Smith, Drew Smith, Zapuki, David Miranda, and Desmond Lindsay. Two guys who I pretty much have no no second thought to giving up. I think they're both non-major leaguers. So it's really, it's really just Zapuki and Smith at this point. And we can do that and Pazos. But if we throw in Pazos, and Smith is in the trade as well, I'm not sure who is going to replace Pazos' spot in the bullpen, honestly. I suppose Samarja will bump Anderson into a bullpen row permanently. Maybe I could do... I guess Anderson is hurt? Oh, they won't even do that anyway. What's wrong with Anderson? Shoulder inflammation. Um, yeah, I mean, I, would, uh, I guess I would rather give up Anderson than Pazos, honestly. Because I feel like I have more of those... Swingman starter types who can also come out of the pen, but Anderson is pretty good at it. And yeah, they they really want to do uh, Pazos. So we wouldn't even have to give up. I guess if we do if we do Pazos, we don't have to give up. Well, we could do Lindsay. I'm fine with that. I guess I'd rather do, do Miranda than Lindsay. So we hold on to Lindsay at least. He's somewhat of a trade chip, and. Maybe uh, let's look at Mark Melanson real quick. We would have to, they would have to retain a, quite a bit of his salary, but he could take Pazos' the spot, at least for the short term. That's not a bad swap. But, yeah, they, they want someone pretty significant to do this. All right, so here is what we're going to do. We are going to do the deal for Samarja because I, we can definitely trade for another reliever, at least do a little. If not, someone else on the block. So we do this. How much money do we have? Our available money would drop. So it's only, it would only be 1.6. So hopefully we can do the do little trade. We might have to get them to retain some some of that salary. But I th I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident we can get another reliever doing this trade. I know Pazos, I think he has two more years of team control left after this. So that's really what we're giving up. But he's been up and down as it is and really does his damage against lefties anyway. See the high whip and the walks have been an issue. So I think we're going to do this deal for Samarja. And I guess we'll get them to retain as much as possible. Because that's going to help us with the do little trade. Potential do little trade. We get them to do 25. All right. And maybe we could do... I'm not sure what we'd have to throw in. What about 35? Um, nah, we're just going to do it straight up for 25. All right, complete that. And then let's go back. Let's look at the trade block. So there's Doolittle, there's Cody Allen, there's a bunch of relievers left, but the lefties, Dan Jennings, Doolittle. Doolittle definitely is the better of those two. Caleb Fleck, no thank you. And it seems like the best option is far and away Doolittle. So we're going to go for him to replace Pazos. And we can get him for Desmond Lindsay. So that is a no-brainer. And we might as well get them to retain as much as possible. I'm not sure. Ooh, it looks like they would go pretty far. This would just leave our options open for a potential August trade if something happened. That's 60. So that, we still have almost $2 million left to spend, potentially, which is good. But let's do our roster. 
we're going to have to send someone down. And I think it's going to have to be David Peterson, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't really have anyone else to go, so Peterson's going to become our first guy up if someone gets hurt now. We'll put Doolittle and Samarja in there. So Samarja, more than anything else, just insurance for Syndergaard potentially not coming back. And Doolittle replacing Pazos. I think that maybe is an upgrade anyway, as it is. So good for us on that. I think we're going to be able to skip by the deadline for now. We'll take one more look at our at our lineup and just double check everything. I did mention maybe getting in a fourth outfielder, but we do have Billy Hamilton and we do have Ahmed Rosario, who I'm trying to turn into a spot left fielder if possible. But uh, we will wait and see on that. But we're gonna we're gonna go th uh, through, and if we feel like we need to make a deal for a fourth outfielder, we can do that in August if we have to. But anyway, that is gonna do it for this episode. So hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of the couple of trades that we did make, and hope you guys are excited. I think this division we've been in first place. Yeah, we're 18 and a half up on Atlanta, so we're gonna handle the one the division looks like. So the next episode will surely be in the division series. I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Another round of playoff episodes is always good for the brand. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. This is Mount. Peace.